Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel where you join me today for a first look at the brand new Lotus Emira. We're going to take a look at the new sports car here in the studio to go through it in detail, a full run through of the exterior and the interior, as well as going through the different engine options, the gearbox options, and taking a better look at this particular car in the first edition specification. This is a very significant product. Many design elements and even aerodynamic features reminiscent of those you find in the Avaya Lotus's full electric hypercar but now in a car that starts from just 60 thousand pounds but absolutely looks the part so let's do it then a full look here at the new Lotus Emira Here it is then, the brand new Lotus Emira, here in the studio for us to take a first look and go through in detail. Now we'll kick off with a quick walk around to run through some of the highlights of a very significant product for Lotus, following the success stories with Elise, Exige and Evora, and after the launch a couple of years ago of Evaya, the electric hypercar, this is truly a sports car with supercar looks and some incredible details. We'll take a look through the design and the aerodynamics on the exterior including some of the cues that have been incorporated from Evaya before checking out the interior in detail as well and running over some of the facts and figures and stats behind it including the different engine options one of which is the Lotus three and a half litre supercharged V6 the other comes from a new technical partnership with Mercedes AMG to provide the two litre turbocharged four cylinder which I find absolutely fascinating now this is a stunning car to behold this is the first edition of of Emira. It wears a plaque over on the side. It's in Seneca blue with the dual tone, so we have the gloss black upper sections, but it is a mid-engine rear-wheel drive sports car that offers incredible looks from a starting price, as I said, of just £60,000. That is truly astonishing to think about when you look at the car that is here in front of us. It is really a big part of the next chapter for Lotus, carrying through many of the design elements from Evaya, the new corporate identity in terms of the badge worn on the nose and lots of the different visual cues, the intakes and outlets for airflow, for example, the headlights, and we'll go through this in detail. It is quite a small car with a length of four meters and 41 centimeters. No doubt that will translate to a very exciting car to drive. Now let's run from the front and go through some of the design elements and details up a little bit more closely for example, you have the new larger Lotus badge worn at the very nose. This is in fact very reminiscent of Evaya, following up the bonnet to the various openings that you have for cooling of air that comes in through the front, in fact, comes out in front of the windscreen, giving both more downforce at the front, as well as helping to expel the air through. The new headlights with the LED running lights on at the moment, with the flicks, again, similar to Evaya, with the Amira logo that you find inside. Down at the bottom, a lot of openings, of course, for the airflow to come through the car. There's no storage up here it's all for the radiators and cooling even with the curtains that run around towards the side as well it has to be said the ride height looks incredibly impressive sitting very low giving it that sporty presence as soon as you start looking at this car and then you've got these sculpted sides with the intakes for the cooling towards the engine again a similar style to where you have the air channels run through the Avaya and carrying that design language into their new sports car as well the side skirts that also cut in under the sides with with more openings found below. As we come round towards the back, you've got this almost integrated duck lip spoiler that you find at the very rear, these C-shaped tail lights, all of the air management back here as well. Again, akin to those openings that you have on the rear of a Via before the two large round exhaust tailpipes found sitting just above the diffuser back here. But this is really a wonderful car to look at. The way that it's presented, the way that it's packaged, this is a very, very impressive thing. Now to touch a little bit more then on the engines. This is the finished look of the two litre turbo four cylinder engine, the engine that we know from the likes of the A45S, the CLA45S for example, but obviously reworked, changed quite significantly for this car 
And I think we can expect that that will line up with the DCT gearbox that will be available as well, delivering power figures in the high 300s to 400. In fact, they're quoting at the moment between the two different engine varieties from 360 to 400 horsepower, meaning zero to 60 miles an hour in under four and a half seconds and a top speed of around 180 miles an hour. Now there will be three different gearbox options. There will be a manual, there will be a traditional automatic, and there will be the DCT, the dual clutch transmission, which I find also very intriguing in terms of that exact different configuration, obviously working with the different engines. We've got the 20 inch wheels in the dual tone finish, the yellow calipers contrasting behind those and that incredible ride height. But let's come around and take a better look then at the interior of the Lotus Emira. Now to pop open the doors, you have the handles just here, it gives a little pop and we can pull these open and have a look then at the interior, the all new interior of this car. You've got the digital displays which illuminate the welcome sequence. You've actually got a 12.3 inch driver's display, you've got the 10.25 inch central screen, the steering wheel with the squared off bottom and all around a very cleanly presented interior but a significant step on from cars before. In this car you've got the dual finish, you've got the seats with storage space actually behind them, you've got useful features like the cup holders, door pocket space, USB-C charging in the arm rest as well the start button just here you've got the automatic gearbox in this car the dual clutch but then there's this exposed area beneath which when you have the manual will allow you to see the linkages straight through which is a very nice detail as well we've got the electric seats as the upgrade a new kef audio system the first time they've actually worked on a car system themselves and this is all round a very very cool interior but let me take a step inside then to run through a little bit more of what we have here Wow, that's a good view over the haunches that you have, the wheel arches. We've got this very simplified interior layout, to be honest. You've got your drive mode selector here. You'll have the tour mode and you'll have the sports mode. And you can also have the Lotus driver package, which will upgrade with a stiffer suspension system and a few other changes as well. The steering wheel itself has a number of controls. For example, these touch pads on either side, your media on one side, your screens and other settings on the other. But all around, this is very much a driver focused car, a cabin that is about being there for the driver to get out and go and enjoy a right hand drive in this case of course being here in the UK and the screens at the moment are giving us a bit of a demonstration of exactly what they can offer and what will be available in terms of the settings the performance screens with your g-force data your climate control is operated through some of the toggles here but giving you repeaters of that information at the sides the driver display has a specific setting as well if you have the driver package you have a new track mode as you can see with your tire pressures and that horizontal rev counter running across the top as well your speed and gear selector in the center but all around a very very nicely finished and presented cabin with quite a significant amount of storage space behind and the view through the rear window where of course you have the engine bay sitting back there beneath the topper in this case the four cylinder engine top as opposed to the v6 which will have a slightly different appearance with the supercharger sitting over the top of it from the passenger side of the car just to pop open the door i do like the way it unlatches and opens itself like that of course the amira side sill kicks the amira logo there on the floor mat there's also a pocket for putting some items just on the central console a very narrow central console i think giving you a sense as well of the size of the car you've got the door pulls here underneath the leather you have on the top rolls the contrast yellow stitching the lovely speaker grills to finish this off and a storage pocket actually measured to fit a half a litre bottle of water or a soft drink for example also this very straight dashboard finish the floating tablet screen which I do actually think is quite nicely integrated up there the start button for the driver is actually underneath this little flap so a sense of drama and sense of occasion when you want to start up the car as well and the various different bits of illumination that you can have in here from the door pockets to the central console and the cup holder storage area as well in fact just to show you a little bit inside here and open up the central armrest inside here is where you have the usb ports usb-c and the regular usb as well the seats themselves have the lotus logo just beneath the headrest area a nice split of different materials with a little bit more light on it plenty of space as well for storage actually behind the seats tucked in back there if you want to be able to take some luggage let's say off on a road trip or a journey or adventure as well all things and characteristics that we're not hugely familiar with seeing on different lotus models they've gone for a very different approach when it comes to emira and to looking forwards to what else 
they can offer. We've got a few more controls and your reading lights up top. Of course, your sun visors with the mirror with the sliding cover across the front of those. Again, more features not traditionally found, but a completely new look, effectively a new start to making a car that offers a lot more as well. Back outside the car and just look at it. This is a very cool thing at a very exciting time as well for Lotus. In fact, they've just had 100 million pounds of investment into their HQ in Hethel, where I visited before, including where they have the test track and where these cars are going to be assembled, all as part of Vision 80, their program looking towards 2028, which will be their 80th anniversary. And of course, the electric future that comes with cars like the Avaya as well but this is in some ways the last hurrah of the combustion engine and what a fantastic way to have done it the Amira boasts supercar-esque looks but very much sports car price point and to be honest I find it actually incredible what it does offer in terms of usability as well a very different prospect from Lotus's of old this is a car that you can have with the ADAS package which means for example having collision avoidance, the adaptive cruise control, lane assist, and you name it in terms of technology and driving assistance, but also a decent amount of luggage space. Having the 208 litres as it is behind the seats, an additional 151 litres of space that you have here inside the rear compartment as well. So a car that you can use in a practical sense. You can, for example, take on a road trip, you could enjoy driving. And while it is quite short, it does have a longer wheelbase than the cars that have come before. It is a little bit wider as well which give it those very sporty proportions also sitting quite low obviously helped as well by having the gloss black upper sections for the roof and for the mirrors just bringing down the weight of that color as well but a very I think small package by modern standards and in its lightest configuration with all of the lightest options possible weighing in at just 1405 kilos which is really truly impressive it's a car based on the new Lotus sports car architecture their new frame effectively that they've built and created for it and if it goes as well as it looks this is going to be a winning package now the first edition cars will start deliveries in spring 2022 initially with the v6 configuration before being followed up by the four cylinder after that there are six different color options available you have hethel yellow shadow gray nimbus gray magma red dark verdant and this car in the seneca blue there will also be five different wheel options along with four different brake caliper options as well as that and a few different configurations that will be available as well on the interior in terms of the leather and Alcantara finishes but truly truly an impressive car and quite a surprise my initial reaction was certainly a very positive one because if somebody said that we were looking here at a car that cost a hundred thousand pounds maybe even a hundred and fifty thousand pounds you would not be surprised it is well and truly punching very very high I think it has to be said and I'm Imagine with that level of performance as well, talking high 300s, 400 horsepower, 430 newton meters, combined with the option of a manual gearbox or with the power to the rear wheels, you know that is a configuration for enjoying a drive out on the roads or out on the racetrack without having to go crazy. And it will feel, I imagine, like quite a nimble car as well. And I'm looking forward to getting to experiencing it myself, hopefully in not too long, to see what the new Lotus Amira is all about. So there we have it then a first look here in the studio at the brand new car i think this is the start of exciting things for lotus and i have no doubt that these are going to prove to be very popular a car available in many different markets around the world a new chapter and they've done it with style so thank you for joining me today for a first look at the lotus amira but that is it for this time and i'll see you again very soon cheers